Hi, my name is Neil Giuliano and I'm the DP. Now, I don't always bring my own gear to jobs, but when I do, I want to make sure that I'm really fast and I'm really efficient. When I first started out, I was a camera assistant. Not really a good one, but still, nonetheless, it taught me a lot in order to understand the properties of properly rigging a camera and making sure that you have a really quick solution because no one really wants to wait on camera. And because of that, I got really into wanting to have solutions to mount any accessory at any time to anything. And for that, I think the best way is to go with a clamp that has quarter 20 or 3816 threads, such as this one right over here. Now there are quite a few different clamps that are like this that have quarter 20 or 3816 threads. But man, I gotta say, Nine Solutions, the Savior Clamp is my favorite one I've ever used, and I recommend this to everyone, like over every other kind of general brand that I think of. So to start off, um, what exactly would a use for a quarter 20 degree or 16 clamp be for? Uh, to me, th the most common thing that I use it for is a monitor mount. So what I would do is say I'm on a table, and I want to put a small like seven inch monitor onto something or I'm on a cart. I want to put a seven inch monitor onto something. So this right here is a monitor that has a Teradek onto it. Uh, well, in order to get the Teradek onto here, Flanders, the company that is this monitor, they sell a $250 bracket that has a bunch of quarter 23 and 16 threads onto them. I should have bought it, but I was a little bit too cheap at the time. So instead what I did is I have a clamp over here on the visa mount in order to mount the Teradek via the arm, or I can do something like this Mafer into here as well. For those that are familiar with Mafer clamps or super clamps, or even um, like those little tiny clamps that are made by Small Rigger Impact, might see already where uh, this might be going because uh, these things are definitely not the best when it comes to multi-purpose mounting. So let's demonstrate a similar scenario with a very similar piece of hardware uh, C-stand. So say I want to put a camera accessory onto a place where you don't have any mounting points. So let's take the super clamp, bite it down, and then boom, right over here, we have the ability in order to mount our ex camera slash lighting accessory to this thing. However, the bite on this thing makes it very easy for things to rotate. <laughs> I'm gonna bite that down a little bit more from the base. There we go. This spinning kind of clamp over here, that's not really a good thing. I have a very good condition Mafer with the uh, interior inside in really good condition as well too. So let's try the same thing with this thing. I mean, it's surely because maybe that was an older clamp, maybe it's because that was plastic as well too. Now, this thing is not the best bite. The other thing too, is maybe let's take a C set out of the equation. What if we go with something What if we go with something that's a little bit of a odd surface? Because hey, when you're in the field, you don't know sometimes what you're going to be mounting stuff into. So I'm going to be going onto this handle right over here with the clamp. Okay, that's relatively a little bit better, but we're still kind of getting the same thing though if I'm trying to wiggle the force a little bit. I can get the bite of the clamp out really easily and then it is not as secure. Now, one thing is that if say you are mounting something that is a very lightweight accessory, the downsides of something like a super clamp or a Mafer or maybe something that doesn't really have enough bite is a thing that you won't really come across. But I abuse my gear. <laughs> I am a industrial user when it comes to uh, the need when it comes to camera accessories. In fact, I love ultralight like uh, control systems, these balls and clamps over here a lot, not just because I can mount them with a lot of stuff, but because I break every single articulating arm that I have ever owned. I have broken $180 Noga arms because I, I'm, I, I'm bad. So if you can see over here, the first thing that starts with this clamp is that there is a little bit of material that's like a rubberly like when it comes to being able to not have a lot of friction, 
but there are three different humps here that are on both the uh, top and the bottom end of the jaw. Now, what I have noticed when I clamp onto a surface is that when you bite down to here, what usually happens is that there's at least two different points of contact that are in the bite. And two different points of contact means that you have a lot sturdier of, uh, <laughs> of a grip onto something. One point of contact, say if you put a uh, single screw, like say that, say that you have a DSLR camera and you have a tripod screw tied to the bottom of the DSLR. Well, with just a little bit of force, not even with a screwdriver, you should be able to undo that screw. But take the same example, if you put a camera cage onto uh, a tripod plate instead, because you could have multiple screws onto there, it is very unlikely that that thing will come off when it comes to a little torque. And that is why I love these clamps so much. Because on a lot of surfaces, on a lot of situations, there's not really a lot of torque. And I'm gonna be demonstrating how much I trust these things in an example that I probably shouldn't do, but I'm going to anyway. So demonstrating over here, this right here is my clamp onto my monitor holding my Teradek. This is me loosening the Flanders monitor. And this is me picking up the clamp, eh, attempting to get it off. There we go. This is me holding the weight of the clamp of the full Flanders. That is how much I trust this thing. And that is how much I realize that it does not slip. There are two different sizes of this clamp. This one over here is the smaller version, and this one over here is the larger version. Larger version, obviously, you could have more capacity on it before you end up reaching a higher kind of payload. But I usually keep at least two of these things on me for every single job because sometimes you just don't know what you're going to be needing when it comes to rigging. I'm going to be showing you some of those things in certain situations that I've come to. Back again with the Flanders, as you can see on the top of the visa mount, I have a clamp over here just to hold this Teradek. But a more common thing that I do on jobs is I take some sort of clamp, go onto the stand itself, and now we have access to our way to rig our accessory. Now the larger version of this clamp also is able to accept a baby pin. This one right here is a retractable version, but you also can get ones that have one that's um, already built into here. But what that means is you can use it with something like a C-stand arm. And then now with the hardware of a stand, you are then able to position your necessary accessory. Now, obviously, you can use this thing as a Mafer clamp, even in this kind of case, an Anki Bonk or a Quacker, although this would probably like really bite into beadboard a lot. <laughs> um, but for me, though, as somebody who carries like more of like a specific camera kit more than has a g &E fan to go to, I'd rather have something that's a lot more multi-purpose that I would grab several different times and maybe something that I grab for like a couple times a year. Now, there are companies that actually make a certain thing like this that you can buy that I am about to make. But this is something that I personally can use with my existing parts, so I don't really have a need in order to buy that said thing. With two of these clamps and one ultralight arm, which could also just, again, be another just uh, magic arm or rotating arm, right over here we have a double clamp kind of arm over into here. So this means we could bite something with a first point of contact. And right here, this is a lot more of a lighting kind of thing, but again, sometimes you just don't know what you're gonna be needing when it comes to camera. We have an articulating double clamp mount with stuff and parts that we can use for other things that are not necessarily for this double clamp mount. One example that I've actually used this thing for is that a lot of map boxes these days that are kind of on the cheaper end, such as the Tilta MB12, which I'm actually using for this current camera build right now, is that they do not have side flags. And I've actually made a thing like this, attached it to my camera, and then used it to make a DIY side flag. Now this right over here is a Blackmagic 6K. 
And to already start off with this uh, double-ended <laughs> clamp thing that we got going on over here, say we're using a rig like this that does not have a matte box and we end up needing a flag, we have a very janky but somewhat useful DIY wallet flag, but in all honesty, you can get something over here like a piece of black wrap or cinefoil, and, and it pretty much does the same kind of thing as a booming flag. And then lastly, a thing that I actually, uh, from experience, uh, <laughs> Had a uh, very stressful shoot one time because I once showed up for a job without a tripod plate. Now, we could have actually decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to take a drive. We're going to be losing some valuable prep time. Um, but the thing is, though, is that the camera was really small and the tripod that I had was really beefy. So with those tools, I was actually able to mount things to a tripod without having to have the plate and we end up not noticing a single difference when it comes to the shoot. And I'm gonna be attempting to make that thing right now. So as I mentioned before, an ideal kind of thing with this rig, if you say need to have a good bite when it comes to here, is two points of contact. So I'm gonna have one clamp at the front and one clamp at the back of the tripod itself. And then I am going to be clamping the actual articulating arms to the cage to have two separate points of contact. So then in theory, even if we say are doing really quick moves, the camera should still be at least in place. As far as leveling goes, we're gonna go into there, but the main thing is to get this thing onto the tripod in a emergency only. And that right there is an emergency. Please rig this camera to this tripod <laughs> rig. That could not have been done without some additional help of mounting accessories, as well as also the nine solutions clamps. <laughs> so to kind of give a general overview as well too, I did this without actually um, planning how I was gonna do this in the first place. It just kind of just like went and wung it like if I was actually on a job. Now, when I originally did this with a different tripod, I had a, uh, a Sackler V20 and that one is a lot, um, is, is a lot wider than this one over here as well too. So I was able to mount to points uh, differently. But the first thing I started with um, is I mounted two clamps to the um, empty receiver, the shoe, that, I think that's what it's called, the shoe of the tripod where the plates were. And then I quickly realized I wasn't able to get a actual um, like bite on the opposite side of the camera because not only do I want two points of contact, I want them on opposite sides because if it's on the same side, then it means that, okay, well, in that case, if it does get torqued, it's gonna go in the same like torque direction. Whereas like if this thing gets moved over here, the fact that we have a left and a right means that the screws are probably not going to be coming undone just by like a little bit of force. So I repurposed the second clamp on originally where the handle was for the tripod on the rosette, which means that now you don't have a rosette to operate on, but I think it's a small trade-off in order to actually get the camera onto here for an emergency. And also due to the fact that I rigged this with a additional five inch arm over here, I could kind of even operate the camera even holding this thing down. But even then or not, I have the left rosette on this tripod in order to put the handle down as well. Now, the one thing I just want to at least like have attention towards though is, do you see any jitters when it comes to this thing? Do you see any like weird ups and downs? It's a pretty usable, I wouldn't say perfect, but it is usable. And when you're in dangerous like, oh shoot situations like that, and sometimes that's what you need to be aiming for when you need to get the job done in the time that you have, especially if you're in some sort of panic. And those are the exact reasons why I absolutely love to carry those extra nine solutions clamps because I trust those things in order to save me in those moments where I am in a bind, where I do need that time and we need something really fast. So that is some ways that I use the clamps, uh, some ways that I hope you don't need to use those clamps, but if you do, you at least can trust them maybe hopefully inspired some people in order to make their own janky rigs to make things work in a pinch as well too. Well, my name is Neil Giuliano. Thank you very much for watching.